Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at a comprehensive example that deals with a finance lease. Now you want to call this a comprehensive example. You want to call it a CPA simulation. It does not really matter. By the end of this recording, you will be able to answer pretty much any accounting question in terms of journal entries and figures about a finance lease. Now let's review real quick because I cannot assume you know what a finance lease is. A finance lease is a lease that meets one of the following five criteria, which are ownership transfer at the end of the lease. So we have a lease and the ownership happened to transfer to the lessee, to the person that used the lease at the end of the lease. Two, or the lease could have a bargain purchase option where the lessee will definitely surely exercise this bargain purchase because it's any reasonable person will exercise it. The present value of the payment is 90% 90, 90 or more of the fair value of the leased asset practically you're buying the asset that's three sorry four 75 percent or more of the asset life simply put you are using this asset for the majority of its life or substantially all of its life in the lease of a specialized of, of a specialized asset where the lessee can only use and the lessor cannot release it because it's so unique to the lessee now if we have only we have to meet one of the five criteria so as long as the lease meets one one of those if we, if we meet more, when, more than one, that's better, but it doesn't really matter. We just have to meet one. If that's the case, then the lessee will debit an asset, right of use asset, and will credit a lease liability. And in the prior session, we figured out how to compute what's included in the lease liability, what's included in the right of use asset. What do we debit? What do we credit? Also, in the prior session, we looked at an operating lease. And if you remember, the initial journal entry is the same, whether it's a finance lease or it's an operating lease. Now the subsequent payments are a little bit different. For a finance lease, when we eventually pay, when we make the payment, what's going to happen is we're going to spread the payment between interest and the liability itself. Now you might be saying, why do we do that for a finance lease? Remember, a finance lease is similar to a loan. And when you have a loan, we have to have interest. Therefore, we have to record the interest on the finance lease. Therefore, when we make the payment, when we credit cash, and you will see this in the example, part of the cash will go toward interest expense, part of it would reduce the lease liability. So this will take care of the lease liability. What happened? What, what about the right of use asset? The right of use asset, it's an asset. What do we do with assets, long-term assets? Well, if it's a physical asset, property, plant, and equipment, we depreciate. This is the right of use. We're gonna amortize, same concept. So we're gonna amortize the right of use asset, amortize it, debit amortiza amortization expense credit, accumulated amortization. Remember, under the operating lease, we combine those two expenses. If you're not sure, go back and view the operating lease. So you have to know the difference on how to journalize entries for a finance lease as well as an operating lease. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, farhatlectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Starting with this example on January 1st, year X2, Jackson, the lessee, enters into a four-year finance lease. I just told you it's a finance lease. You don't have to worry about the criteria. For office equipment from Quantum Leasing, which is the lessor, the owner of the asset. The lease includes an annual payment of 24000 per year with the first payment due December 31st, X2. Notice the first payment is due a year from today. The rate implicit in the lease is 6%. The present value of an ordinary annuity, which is an ordinary annuity for four years at 6%. The factor is 3.465106. This might be given to you in the problem, or you might be giving a time value, a time value table, and you have to select the right, the right present value factor. You're looking at n equal to 4, i equal to 6%, the present value of ordinary annuity. Jackson Enterprises uses the straight line method. Even if you are not told, you assume we'll use the straight line method. 
first what we're going to do is go we're going to look at the journal entry the initial journal entry now how do we record this lease at, at the inception of its life well we're going to find the present value of the payments and record that as the liability and the asset the payments are twenty four thousand. we're going to multiply this by the present value factor that's giving to you and we're going to be recording an initial lease of eighty three thousand one sixty three that's the asset that's the debit and we're going to credit a liability for eighty three thousand one sixty three so this entry recognizes the asset and the liability what are we going to do with this asset we are going to amortize what are we going to do with the liability we're going to, going to be reducing and at the same time recording the interest expense so what companies would do for something like this they will prepare an amortization schedule well what does it look like well starting with the carrying value of the lease liability and the carrying value of the right of use asset 20x2 at the end of the year we'll make our first payment the, the payment lease payment is the same remember the payment is the same 24,000 that's based on the contract now what we have to do is we have to compute the interest component the interest expense so how do we compute this interest expense well interest is a factor of your liability so you have to take your liability the prior balance of your liability the beginning of the year which in our situation 83,163 multiplied by 6% we're gonna get 4,990 so of the 24,000 what we're saying is 4,990 is the interest expense and this is the interest expense well obviously the remainder of the payment if it's not interest it must be the principal and the principal is nineteen thousand ten dollars and what's going to happen with the principal the principal would reduce the liability to sixty four thousand one fifty two now the lease liability is the remaining balance after subtracting the principal from the liability at the start then we're going to take the asset the amorti the asset which is the eighty three thousand one sixty three and we're going to amortize this over straight line and if we take this over four years we're going to amortize every year twenty thousand seven hundred and ninety two and this is the lease then we are going every every time we amortize we are going to be reducing the book value the book value of the asset which, which goes from eighty three thousand one sixty three so on the cpa exam they might ask you something like this what is the book value at the end of year three will be, this will be the book value they might ask you what is the lease liability balance as of year three will be will be forty four thousand and one dollars so you have to be careful you have to know how to read these schedules or you might be required as part of the simulation is to complete this amortization schedule which is no different than completing an amortization for a bond very similar concept or an amortization for a loan notes payable they all follow the same concept now we're going to go a step further i'm going to you know show you the journal entries because it's very important to see this although i kind of showed it to you but let's do it again so year x2 we are going to debit interest expense 49.90 we're going to debit principal payment which is the lease liability nineteen thousand ten dollars and we're going to credit cash reduce cash so we're going to be reducing cash reducing the liability and increasing in interest expense from a journal entry perspective are we done yet not at all not at all why because we still have an asset that we have to do what with we have to what do we do with assets long-term asset we depreciate or we amortize this is kind of it's not a physical asset we have the right so it's a form it's a form of intangible twenty thousand seven ninety one amortization expense debit credit accumulated amortization twenty thousand seven ninety one and we're good to go now i'm going to show you the subsequent entries but i'm pretty sure you can guess them this entry will be the same and this entry what's going to happen to this entry interest expense will go down lease liability will go up and this will stay the same now why your interest expense notice the following payment will be three thousand eight hundred and forty nine why because your lease liability is no longer eighty three thousand it was reduced then the following it will be even lower so let's take a look at a year x3 so notice the interest expense is thirty eight forty nine the lease liability now the twenty four thousand more and more of it going toward the liability and the amortization is the same then let's look at x4 24,000 interest expense is lower than the prior year the lease liability reduction is higher 
but you know, I don't want you to think it's going down. The interest expense as an amount is lower. The lease liability is 21,360. Then we reduce the, then it bring the lease liability down to 22,642. And the amortization is the same. It's the straight line. Year five, again, of the 24,000, only now 1,358 going toward the interest because the principal amount is now 22,642. What's left is going toward the principal, 22,642, to bring the lease liability down to zilch, zero, nothing. This is what happened to liabilities. They go down to zero. How about the book value of the asset? By the time of its, by the time we depreciated the fourth year, we depreciated the whole 83,000, therefore the about 83,163, the balance is zero. So notice in total, the liability went down to zero, which is we reduced liability by 83,163, and the asset was amortized by 83,163 that brought the balance down to zero. So you have to understand the schedule very well because understanding the journal entries, it's gonna help you answer many questions on the exam because you have to be very careful. They might ask you, what is the interest expense? They might give you this table and what's the interest expense in year four? Oh, that will be the amount. What's the reduction in the principal in year three? What's the balance of the liability in year four? So you have to be very careful what you are being asked because you are giving a schedule like this. I can ask you 10 different questions about 10 different things. Or I might ask you to prepare one from scratch in a form of a simulation. No problem whatsoever. Farhat Lectures is the key to your success. You want to go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs, additional resources that's going to prepare you for the CPA exam, for your accounting courses, for your professional certifications, CMA or any other certification. Invest in yourself. Good luck. Study hard. Invest in yourself and stay safe.